So today I've got something really exciting lined up. I brought a van full of the latest 29er enduro bikes to the Forest of Dean. I'm gonna get a stopwatch out. I'm gonna try and find out which one is fastest. So first up, we've got the brand new Santa Cruz Mega Tower. Full carbon frame, 160 mil travel front and rear, adjustable geometry, carbon wheels, and well over seven grand. Yeti SB150, full carbon frame, 170 millimeter travel fork, 150 millimeters out back. One of the most inspiring bikes we've ridden in years, just over seven grand. Canyons Drive, adjustable geometry and travel with the shapeshifter system, full carbon frame, five grand for this model. Next, specialized stump jumper Evo Carbon. Carbon frame, carbon wheels, one of the most radical geometry of any trail bike, but only 150 mil front and 140 mil rear travel. This is 6,800 pounds. Caliber Century, amazing value for money at two grand, 170 mil travel front, 150 rear, alloy frame, really similar sizing and geometry to the Yeti. Lastly, we've got the Geometron G1, some of the most radical sizing and geometry here. Alloy frame, coil shock, spec there, about five, seven, five, eight, as you see it. So that's the lineup of bikes. The track I'm gonna be riding them on is 1.3 kilometers in length and drops 130 meters. Starts off with a series of flat turns where you need to carry momentum and you need to be able to change direction really quickly. Then it drops into a couple of fast bomb holes and across a hideous spider's web of roots. Dropping onto the fire road, it's about 100 meters to compose yourself before it plunges again into another series of really rocky bomb holes. It's a track I know really well, so I'm gonna try and be as consistent with my effort and line choices as possible. Now, except for the G1, they're all bikes I've ridden extensively before. But I genuinely have no idea which one's gonna be fastest. So now it's time to place your bets. In reverse order, the slowest bike on the day was the Caliber Sentry. And I didn't need the clock to tell me, I could feel it through the seat of my pants. With a 1 minute 50.25, it was the slowest through all of the splits, but it felt the most sluggish through the flat turns at the top. There's a simple reason for this. At over 16 kilos, it's by far the heaviest bike here. So it takes a lot of effort to change direction and the full on WTB tires with their heavy duty casings don't help the rolling resistance on our relatively flat test track. But let's put this result into some context. It's by far the most affordable bike here, so it was always going to be on the back foot compared to the other bikes. But the geometry is excellent and the suspension well sorted, and the fact that it was only 1.5 seconds slower than the Santa Cruz Mega Tower shows how much performance you can get for a relatively modest outlay. Which brings us on to the fifth fastest bike, the Santa Cruz Mega Tower with a 1 minute 48.69. Now that came as a bit of a surprise to me as it certainly felt rapid from where I was sitting. Looking at the splits, it lost time on the fire road. And when you look at the footage, you can see I'm spinning the cranks to top up the speed. And it bottomed out with an almighty bang coming out of the first bomb hole, which was somewhat unsettling. It also lost a bit of time in the last few turns and jumps into the finish. But from the pilot seat, it was difficult to pinpoint why the Mega Tower was the second slowest bike. With the fourth fastest time of the day, it was the Stump Jumper Evo Carbon with a 1 minute 48.17. This bike definitely punches above its weight and proves that good geometry and good suspension is always more important than how much travel you have. The coil shock felt simply amazing, making up for the grip lacked by the hard compound specialized butcher tires and letting me push much harder than I had any right to on a 135mm travel bike. It was also a heck of a lot of fun to ride. Ditch the inner tubes and switch to some decent tyres and the Stump Jumper Evo would be a giant slaying weapon. Third fastest time went to the Canyon Strive with a 1 minute 47.08. From the saddle it felt steeper than the other bikes here and the suspension lacked a bit of sensitivity and grip compared to the best bikes but it was certainly efficient and fast. 
which brings us to the two fastest bikes on the day. In second place it was the Geometron G1 with a 1 minute 46.92, which is an impressive result considering this is the first run I'd ever done on this bike. Arguably I should have been on a smaller size too. This was a large with a vast 515mm reach and a mammoth 1324mm wheelbase and it dwarfs the other bikes here. The next size down would have been closer to the rest of the field while still retaining its signature progressive sizing. Either way, the G1 wasn't just fast, it felt fast too. And it did a great job of dispelling a few myths about long slack bikes too. It was within half a second of the fastest bikes through the flat turns at the start. With rapid changes of direction, these should have tied the G1 up in knots, but it was quite the opposite. I also had a big moment on the G1 with the front end almost washing out. And while it's true that none of the other bikes slid out at that point, I was actually slightly offline. And on another bike with a shorter wheelbase, I may not have had the time to react and correct the slide. All that leaves now is to reveal the fastest bike and if you've been paying attention you'll have already worked out that it was the Yeti SB150. The Yeti clocked a 1 minute 45.96, a second faster than the G1 and almost 5 seconds faster than the Caliber. It did have the fastest rolling rear tyre but it also had a great balance between agility and stability and suspension that worked as well through the deep holes as it did loaded up through the sweeping turns. But it wasn't without its faults. With no upper guide, the chain dropped off on the first run so we had to take it up for another go and we had to use a gear that was less than ideal to add some tension to the chain. If this had been a race, it would have been game over. So there you have it. The fastest bike down our test track is the Yeti SB150. It's a bike that manages to be as fun messing around in the woods as it is fast down a timed racetrack. And we hope you enjoyed the video and let us know what you think of the results in the comments below.